All right, welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, what we're going to do is first I'll style up our context committee just a little bit, make it look a little nicer, remove the bullet point from the list. And then what we'll do is we'll make it so that when you click on unban user, uh, it'll invoke a function and that function should call our HTTP, our NestJS uh, API. And our NestJS API is going to take care of invoking the Discord REST API and calling the uh, the endpoint to actually unban the user. Okay, so we're not actually going to be unbanning the user from the Discord bot. We're actually going to be calling the endpoint uh, on the Discord API to unban the user. And that's pretty much I think that's pretty much what the uh, the Discord JS library does anyways. So um, we're just going to be doing it ourselves. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's go into the context menu container. So inside styles, inside index.tsx, we're going to go back to the context menu container. And what I'm going to do is I want to style this, uh, this context menu change just a little bit first. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a darker background color. Uh, I think that's okay. I do want to get rid of the border radius just a little bit. Uh, not too much of a fan of it being super round, maybe three pixels might be better. Okay. You can add some, you can add like a box shadow too if you want. I think maybe adding like a box shadow would be nice. Let's try that. Uh, let's do. Let's try that. Yeah, that's, uh, that looks a lot better. Honestly, I can, uh, I can deal with that. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay. Uh, so let me try giving it a dark opacity. Yeah, perfect. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. I'll probably, I think, yeah, I'll probably leave it like this. Uh, maybe for the opacity of the of the box shadow of the color, we'll probably decrease that back to fifteen. I think maybe for yeah, yeah this is fine. Okay. Uh, what I what's most important for me is removing this bullet point. So because inside our context menu container, um, we have an unordered list. So I'm just going to do ul list style type none, and I'm going to get rid of the adding as well. Okay, and any margin should also be removed as well. Perfect. Yeah, I knew something was up with that, and I think the list. The list item element doesn't have any padding or margin either. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll give our own padding. We don't need any margin though. So we'll do for uh, actually no, not actually no for the padding. I'm gonna wait on that. What I want to do is let me go back to Guild Bands page. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and style up this list element or not a list element. This uh this list item element. Okay, so. Essentially, what we'll do is I want to go ahead and make it so that um, first, let me give it some padding. So that's top and bottom 10 pixels. Uh, actually, no, I think maybe 20 pixels. Uh, actually, I think instead of 20 pixels, uh, uh, 20 pixels top and bottom, I'll probably do maybe 12 pixels honestly actually no i'll do 18 pixels yeah we'll 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 do that for now okay uh what we have to do also is we have to make it so that when we hover over the list items okay um we're going to change the background color just a little bit and we'll add a nice animation well not animation but transition so let me go ahead and do that it's, it's kind of similar to what you do with links when you hover over a link the the color usually changes or shifts just slightly. So that way it indicates to the user that they are, you know, hover overing it and it'll make it obvious that they can click on it. Okay. So, uh, might not be too much of a fan of this padding, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see. Okay. You know what the problem is? We don't have any padding for our, uh, unordered list. So let me fix that first. Let me set the padding to 10 pixels. Yeah, there we go. That that's actually a lot better. Box sizing border box. Okay. Yeah. So the problem is that we don't have any padding for our uh, for our unordered list, so it kind of looks a little bit weird. We do want some padding though. So let's try maybe 18 pixels, and then we will remove some padding 
from the list item element. Okay. So maybe, I don't know, 10 pixels, 10 pixels. We might not need too much padding um, because we have the unordered list. Maybe just a little bit. Um, but let me see. I'm trying to think what would be the best way we can do this. Let me try uh, 8 pixels. Uh, okay, you know what we'll do is we'll do 8 pixels for the unordered list. And for the uh, list item, we'll do... 10 pixels and what we'll do is we'll add a border radius of three pixels so similar to the on so not on order list similar to the uh the context menu container so you can see that so that way if we don't add a border radius if we don't you're going to see it's going to be sharp inside of a div that has border radius and it doesn't really look nice so it's better if we have it it's better if we match that border radius um, I will go ahead and actually do one more thing. I will go ahead and actually just change the padding once again. So, whoops. I will change it to 6 pixels top and bottom, and then maybe 14 pixels. Yeah, I actually, I like this a lot better, actually. Okay. Actually, no. I, I'm, I'm really indecisive, so I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, there we go. This, this is fine. This is fine. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on, you know, the CSS, but I do want to make it look good. I actually really want to make it look nice. Okay. All right, cool. We'll also add a cursor for the hover too. Okay, so you can see that there's a hover. And let me go ahead and do one more thing and add a transition. So we'll do, let's say, let's, let's say uh, 300 milliseconds, background color, ease. Uh, maybe linear, maybe. Nah, it's a little bit too slow. I might not even add... I might not even do that. Yeah, I don't think transition would look nice, to be honest. So we'll just leave it like that. Okay, cool. So that works. Perfect. Now that we've spent a good five minutes trying to style a simple box, uh, what we'll do next is we can actually start working on the programmatic features now. So just for... Uh, just for a placeholder, I'm going to add some other stuff. So, for example, this will be unban. This will be, uh, let's see, um, update, ban, something like that. Whatever you can think of, obviously, feel free to, uh, you know, add whatever you want. It's totally up to you. If you want, you can add, like, a custom border in between, like, the items if you want. Uh, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. So, we can do unban, update, ban, and you can add whatever you want. Okay? So, let's go over here now and so all we got to do is literally just register an on click okay and unclick events so uh on click and when we click on that it's just going to call a function so we'll just create a function up top over here called handle unban paste paste that in over there okay now I'll just go ahead and write a console log, unbanning. Actually, let me do this. Unbanning user. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, it's adding the question mark operator because selected ban might be undefined. Okay. But unbanning user selected ban user dot user name. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and open up the logs. So I'm going to right click, click on update, uh, not update, click on unban. You're going to see it says unbanning Yahoo news, right click vein, click unban, unbanning user vein. So we'll, we're actually getting like the latest value, the latest user. Okay, cool. All right. So what's next is we need to go ahead and uh, what I'll do is I'll go inside api.ts. We don't have the endpoint yet, but we'll have to implement that. We'll have to implement that ourselves uh, in the nest API after. So we'll create a function right now, um, and we'll call it uh, unban guild. I'll call it unban guild member. Actually, I'll call it unban user because they might not be a guild member. So we're going to need a couple of information we're going to need the guild id well actually do we need the guild id i don't think we do actually actually no we do we do we do 
actually let me actually do this let me actually go to the discord docs and double check that would be a lot more better okay so uh remove guild ban requires um slash guild slash guild id slash bans and then the user id okay uh so what we got to do is first it has to be a delete a delete uh so here's what i'm going to do um let me just go back here whoops what's going on over here let me go back to our code i'm going to go ahead and actually rename this function to delete guild ban just so that we can follow like the http method because i didn't know i forgot that it was a delete method i wasn't sure so this is actually going to be an axios.delete so on the nest api we're going to go ahead and implement a delete method and we're going to call it from our front end now you could ask yourself this can't i just directly call the discord uh, api the, the answer is no because you actually need the bot token well okay you could but that would require you to actually get the bot token on the front end and you probably don't want to do that because then someone could easily just see your bot token and then they can compromise your account so that it's important that you handle this on the back end okay because if you were to call the endpoint directly from your front end application uh first you need the bot token okay and people can just easily look at the logs and look at where you're passing in for the headers and they can just you know they can see that you're passing the bot token which is not good okay so hopefully that answered that question so uh we're going to call axios.delete and the url is going to look like this again we have not implemented this endpoint on our nest application yet but this is what it's going to look like it's going to be slash discord slash guilds um let's see guild id um hmm. i think maybe we could do slash band as well okay uh so because we already, we have an endpoint for bands for get for for the get request but we can also have the same endpoint url but the only difference is that it's a delete method but the important thing is is that we actually need the user id so i'm trying to think what would be the best way to to pass in the user id I'm not sure if it's if it's wise to pass in um, a request body for a delete method because you can see over here the way Discord does it is they pass in they pass it in uh, for the route parameter they pass in the user ID in the route parameter so we'll just follow Discord and do the same thing too so we'll do slash uh, guild ID slash bands slash uh, and we'll call it user ID or it should be dollar sign user ID because we need this as a parameter. Okay. And we'll also need to, uh, it seems like we can't even pass in a request body for delete. So that answers our question because if I look at the axios.delete method, uh, the second parameter is a config. So that makes good sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we got to go ahead and invoke this delete guild ban, uh, delete guild ban method or I should say function. So whenever we click on handle unban, we'll call delete guild ban. We're going to pass in the guild ID and then the selected ban dot user dot ID like that. Now it's going to give me a, this annoying error because it's saying argument of type string is string or undefined is not assignable to parameter of type string. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and say if there's no selected ban, we'll just say and no user was selected. Okay, so that way we don't have to worry about type checking this, or not type checking, uh, null checking this. And I'll go ahead and return. There we go. So that's a lot better. Because obviously, uh, you know, it does a null check for us. Okay, but uh, to be honest with you, the only way that this handle unban function will ever be called is if we actually uh click on that unban that unban uh element right and the only way to get to that unban element is if we actually have a selected ban okay but it's still good practice to do null checks okay um okay cool so we'll we'll wrap everything inside a try catch so uh let me go ahead and use async await so i'm going to add async keyword in front of the function 
And I'm going to await this. Okay. I'm just going to do a console log error. Okay. And we can add uh, like a toast message to notify the user on the front end that everything was uh, everything was successful or if something failed. We can do that as well. Okay. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Um, because like I said, we have not implemented this URL yet, so we can't test this just yet. In the next episode, we're going to hop over to the NestJS API. We're going to go ahead and implement this endpoint. Okay. And then we're going to implement the logic to invoke the, uh, the discord, uh, rest endpoint to unban the user. And then we'll put everything all together and then you'll see how it's going to work. Okay. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you what happens real quick. If I were to click on unban. You're going to see it says 404 not found, and that makes obvious sense because um, we have not implemented that URL yet. But you can see that at least the parameters are being properly interpolated. You can see that we have the guild ID and we have the user ID. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.